want your team members to step up to greater levels of commitment, to take more accountability, you have to drive fear out of your organization. In fact, specifically, you need to encourage and embolden them. Namely, you have to give them more courage and make them more bold. Sometimes this can be tricky because fear is a pretty powerful motivator and it's part of almost every leader's repertoire. When you tell somebody that there's a lot riding on what they're doing or there could be negative consequences if they don't do it well, to some degree you're marshalling fear in the interest of helping them step up their game. That's not bad, that's, that's fine to have that part of your, your overall motivational repertoire, but it's important to be careful about how much you use fear. Sometimes the fact that fear can cause an immediate response and can animate people and cause them to step up their game distracts us from the fact that long term fear has a debilitating effect on our relationships and actually it no longer animates people, it shuts them down. So if you're trying to be careful of these things in your own leadership practice, here's two things you need to know about fear as a motivator. First of all, long term fear is a distancing effect. Fear causes people to actually stay away from the thing that they fear. This, this makes sense, right? Because you have an aversion to the thing that you fear. I had a dog when I was younger that had a, a collar on it that would beep when it got close to the boundaries of our property and it would tell the dog to stay away. In fact, if the dog didn't stay within the boundaries, it would actually deliver a small shock to the dog and this, this kept it inside this invisible fence. The only danger of this or the only problem with this was that there was some frequency produced by our television set inside the house that caused the same response from the collar. And the dog quickly learned this and stayed away from the TV at all costs. We couldn't figure out why it wouldn't come in the room or why it wouldn't come when we called it. It just tried to avoid the TV at all costs. Similarly, if people are afraid of you, if they recognize that in your leadership part of your motivational strategy is to produce fear, one of the ways they deal with this is to avoid you. Now that's a problem to leaders because if your people are avoiding you, if they're keeping their distance, you rapidly see your ability to influence them, to direct them or to call them upward and onward diminished as well. So long term, fear has a distancing effect that you need to be wary of if your goal is to call people to greater levels of accountability and commitment. Secondly, long term, fear is desensitizing. That means that if you're using fear to motivate people, over time it takes more and more of it to cause the same effect. It's desensitizing and they no longer have the same response to it. I had a boss one time that was um, very adept at using fear to motivate. In fact, it seemed like every time he asked me to do something, he managed to remind me that my job was on the line. He was pretty creative about how he said this, but he would say, you know, if you don't perform, you're, you might lose your job or your job is riding on this. And this was something that he said every time he gave me an assignment. Now, the first time he did this, obviously, I stepped up my game because I needed this job and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any problem and I didn't lose my job. But after he said this many times, you know, I got tired of it. It just sort of exhausted my ability to even be afraid until one day when he was telling me that if I didn't do a good enough job, I could lose my job. The only emotion I felt was, well, fine, go ahead and take it. At that point, I no longer had the response that he was looking for. Now, this is doubly damaging to your team because when this happens, leaders often recognize that they're not getting the same response and this causes them to double down on the very thing that they've been doing all along. So they try to produce more fear in the interest of eliciting the motivation that they were looking for. You can see how quickly this creates a, a vicious cycle that can drive your relationship and your organization into the ground because it, it creates more and more fear and slowly distances, desensitizes, and shuts the team down. So if you're including fear in your motivational repertoire, be very, very careful because those things that are useful in the short run might actually damage your team in the long run.